everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today is Christmas Haul Part 2. Let's dive in. First, we have Arthur Miller Broken Glass. Now, you're probably saying, Acacia, you already hauled this book. And I would say, yes, I did. But it came in the wrong edition, so I sold it. And I got the right edition. And that's magic. Plus, it was only three bucks. <laughs> this is Carrie Fisher, Wishful Drinking. And this is the memoir of Carrie Fisher, written by herself. And I am very excited to dive into this. I ordered it the day of her passing and then it was sold out everywhere and it took forever to get to me. But now I have it. I was hoping to read it immediately, but now I'm a little... I don't know if I really want to dive down that dark path. I don't know. I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. The Pindar Diamond. This is by Katie Hickman. This I saw on... Um, the shelf and I'd never heard of it before and I was very curious about it because I loved the cover and it turns out that it is a story of a woman who washes up ashore of a town. She is mute and crippled and she has a baby with her and the townsfolk believe that that means that she has a bad omen of death around her because she is weird and her child is just there and they send her away with a bunch of acrobats and a circus folk. So I'm in. It sounds like something up my alley. This was a recommendation from a friend. She is very supportive of my <laughs> obsession with trying to understand race dynamics and racism in the US and what I can do to change it and what I can do to learn about it. And so this was her recommendation. This is Something Must Be Done About Prince Edward County. And it is written by a white woman, but it is about a white woman who was raised in a in a county that is notoriously racist but she didn't understand that she was racist until she left that county and went out into the real world where she was mixed with different races and all of that and then came home to see what she um, had missed as a child so I'm very curious about that memoir and then we have this this is Visera and it's by Gabriel Squalia and I I saw this and it looked really obscure and strange and it's a dystopian fantasy of earthquakes, killing fields, drug addictions, and routine evacuations that is also profoundly humane and laugh out loud funny. And that was blurbed by the author of Bones and All which I really enjoyed so I thought this was probably gonna be really interesting. I don't know much about the plot but I do know that I like that author so I figured I'd give it a try and it was relatively inexpensive. This is a new release. Can we talk about this? So cover, you know, nothing assuming. It is raised so it's very pretty but then you open it. Pretty burnt orange, right? And then BAM! So beautiful! It's so bookie pornish. This one, oh my gosh, I'm just so excited about this one. And then we have this. This one I found randomly and I found it on a, uh, a book riot. This is Midnight Without a Moon. It is a story about colored Mississippi and the people leaving Mississippi and not coming back and trying to find their place in the world and then trying to find their place back in Mississippi for those who have been left behind. It's a middle grade, so I'm very hopeful that it will be done beautifully and that it'll really have a more whimsical feel to it. I'm very excited. And yeah, I figured this would be a nice, easy read for me, especially since lately I've been kind of heavy on the reading. This one was compared to The Clay Girl. So of course I had no choice. So this was told, uh, the way this was sold to me is it's a backdrop of the Vietnam War and the Manson murders. Cruel and beautiful wor world is a page turner of a naive youth um, manipulated by power and anxiety of the era. So I am very excited about this. This is Beautiful Cruel World by Caroline Levitt and I 
have never really I've seen this advertised because I think it was just like kind of something that people were like yeah you should read it and I was like okay yeah sure but then when I heard that it had the backdrop of the Manson murders and that it also kind of flickered around the Vietnam War and that it was also compared compared to Clay Girl in writing style I couldn't pass it up of course it's very pretty um it's just a green cover foresty green but I mean I'm hoping that I absolutely love it and if I don't I will sell it because I just I really think I'm really hoping to love this like I'm really hoping and then we have this I heard about this on Mercedes channel and then it was re-brought up in my conversations with my friend who also recommended something must be done about Prince Prince Edward County and this is blood at the root and this is about a county in Georgia where a group of black men are accused and found guilty of harming a white woman and then all of the blacks in the community are run out of town and then it continues in that way yeah well into the 90s so that is really I'm really excited about this and I'm nervous because I know this is going to be a hard one to read but with the fact that I've been reading Gone with the Wind and this taking place in Georgia I'm this takes place in Georgia in September 1912 when the initial run out occurs and so it's it's far enough after the Civil War but it's also not far enough that the South hasn't forgotten and so I'm really really curious about this. I have a couple books that I'm reading with this backdrop of a time period in the South for the black community and so I'm really excited to read some nonfiction and get dived into that as well. So this is Bolshoi Confidential and this is Secrets of the Russian Ballet from the Rule of the Tsars to Today. I already read A History of Ballet and that really took a lot of conversation about Russian culture and class differences and things of that nature. Um, Anna Karenina discussed the class issues as well and I'm gonna be reading um, War and Peace soon too so I really would love to get more of a backstory on that piece of Russia, the class systems and how they work and what a ballerina is meant to be and is it a way up or out of the class or is it down? I'm not really sure. Um, I know what it was when it initially began because I read ballerina but I don't know what it is now. So I'm very curious about all that. And that's going to be a chunkier book that'll be going very, 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 very slowly, which is fine. And then the other book that I picked up is this. This is Selection Day, and it's by Aravid Agdig. And it is a story about India, um, talking about cricket and a family that has a real love for cricket. And I've started to read it. It's the book in my bag right now. And I have been carrying it around with me. And I'm just very interested because the dialect of it is kind of harder to follow than I expected. But I'm enjoying it nonetheless. It really involves you having to sit down for a good 20 to 30 minutes to get into the swing of it. But then after that, it just kind of flows. But then if you stop again, it, it takes another 20 or 30 minutes to get back into it, at least for me. And so I'm really enjoying hearing new dialect and seeing different ways of, of communication that I am struggling to understand because it makes me reread things and that's not a bad thing for me. So I'm really enjoying this so far. And then the last thing that I picked up for myself was this. This is a book lover's journal and this is the book, you write the book, the title, oh, don't. You write the book title, the author, the publisher, the pages, the genre, and then you do a little blurb about what you thought of it. This is going to help me keep my thoughts together so that I can have more efficient and better well-executed wrap-ups for you guys. Um, it'll also help me keep notes of which books I want to pick up and what I want to read after. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far and I'm really liking what it's doing to keep me organized. I just found it on Amazon. It wasn't like super cheap, but it was cheap enough. Um, I think it was like 15 bucks. Yeah, I think it was like 15 bucks. All right, guys, that is everything. And I will see you in my next video.